Given everything that's going on in the world and in the economy, there's a lot to talk about, a lot to discuss. Let me start with something you just referred to, which is the surprise to the upside in the economic data, despite, as you termed it, I think, historically fast pace of growth. Are you surprised at how resilient the United States economy is? Just today, we got jobless claims numbers surprised because they were low. We got the retail sales numbers you mentioned. We got industrial production. Across the board, it seems like a very strong economy, despite all you've done to try to slow it down. Yes, so uh, we certainly have a very uh, uh, resilient economy on our hands. We've got uh, the economy growing strongly. If you think back a year, many forecasts called for the U.S. Economy, economy to be in recession this year. Not only has that not happened, growth is now running for this year above its longer run trend. So that's been a surprise, driven largely by uh, consumer spending, driven by a very strong job market with uh, people getting jobs with high, first high nominal wages, and then as inflation has come down, real wages, which is spurring spending. And we've also had inflation coming down. So, you know, uh, that's, it, it really is a story of much stronger demand. There may also be, there may be some ways in which the economy is um, less affected by interest rates. Uh, it's hard to know precisely, but for example, companies, many companies, any company with bond market access will have termed out its debt, right? and therefore may not be feeling the effects of higher rates. The same may be true of homeowners who have a, a long-term fixed rate, low rate mortgage, who then are therefore not, because it's not an adjustable rate or a higher rate, they're not, they're not feeling that increase in rates. So the, the economy may be somewhat less uh, susceptible to the effects of rate increases. On the other hand, if you look at, um, look at interest-sensitive spending, these are very much the, the, the um, the places where we see, we, where we expect to see and do see effects. So, for example, in um, in housing or in you know the housing sector has been sector has been very affected by higher rates as purchases of, of uh, durable goods. If you look at surveys, people will not say that it's a good time to buy a car or a house. Quite the contrary. So we see policy working through its usual channels. It may just be that rates haven't been high enough for long enough. And, and again, it's all happening in a context of, of very strong demand. We've heard other people <clears throat> speculate maybe the terming out of debt, as you say, both corporate debt and household debt, may diminish the effectiveness of rate hikes. Do you have a view on whether that's true? And if it is true, what does it say about monetary policy? Does it mean you have to go farther in the rate hikes, or do you just not have the power to affect it? So no, I, I don't think that, that there's a, um, a fundamental shift in the way that interest rates affect the economy. There may be some differences in this cycle because of what I mentioned. Um, I, as I mentioned, you, we are seeing those, the effects where we expect to see them, which is interest sensitive spending and also asset prices to some extent, uh, and the exchange rate, which you're also seeing a uh, strong exchange rate, which is, which is disinflationary. So I don't think there's a, a fundamental change in the way monetary policy affects the economy. And again, it goes back to just very strong demand. We take the economy as it is. We take fiscal policy and the economy and all the things we don't control, they come to us and we conduct policy always to achieve maximum employment and stable prices. So we just take what comes. The fact that we have a strong growing economy, a strong growing labor market and uh, you know, inflation coming down. These are the elements that we want to, to see that to achieve the, the outcome we want. It may take more time, but ultimately, uh, those are, that's, this is the kind of thing you would want to see along the path to getting through this without a big increase in unemployment. How much effect thus far has the Fed had? Uh, we, we all have memorized now long and variable lags. How long and how variable, and where are you in that process? Are you at the 25% point, the 50% in terms of seeing it in the effect in the real economy? So there's, there's no precision in, the, uh, in, in our understanding of, of how long lags are. Um, one thing that has changed in the modern era is that markets now, uh, over the course of the last 30 years, central banks have decided instead of being secretive to be very transparent. And what that has meant is that markets move actually well in anticipation, well before our policy moves. So the transmission from policy moves to, to financial conditions actually happens before the moves now, whereas that was not the case 50 years ago when Milton Friedman you know, coined the phrase long and variable legs. So, but now you have financial conditions changing and the question is how does it affect the economy? The standard channels are uh, asset prices, interest sensitive spending and the exchange rate, for example. And we, again, we do see that happening 
just not as fast as we would like. And I would attribute some of that to just stronger demand. You know, household savings were, were turned out to be higher. Household spending has been stronger, and that's by far the largest part of the economy.